Well, hello, Rock Church. How you guys doing? I am ready for the eclipse. What about you? I would say raise your hand if you're ready, but I can't see a thing. So just curious, who, who has these glasses? Some of you have these glasses. Oh, you got a bunch? Well, let me put on these glasses so I can actually see who I'm talking to for a second. There we go. But yeah, like, like, um, man, if you're, let me just say this real quick. If you're new here, my name's Josh, one of the pastors. And uh, whether you're here live in this auditorium, whether you're watching online, one of our campuses, glad you are with us. And uh, I do just want to speak about this eclipse thing for, for just a little bit, you know, and, and uh, just have some fun with it. Uh, who, who's excited that the eclipse, eclipse is coming now that I can see you? Raise your hand. Okay, yeah, perfect. And, and and, uh, you know, some great things are going to happen tomorrow. Uh, some of you, you've got bosses that have said, hey, you can have the day off or have the afternoon off. The rest of you are going, really? Somebody gave their staff time off? Yeah, you're a little upset right now. Um, but uh, others of us will be working or uh, going to school or getting ready for school, uh, doing some things like that. But it is kind of an exciting time, you know, just everything that's going with it. Um, but I'll be honest, I've been blown away by the amount of marketing that has gone into this eclipse. You know what I'm saying? Like, everybody's selling the glasses. And I know you're thinking, but, but you, have, you have to have the glasses to look at the eclipse. Guys, it's not like the sun is going to become Medusa all of a sudden, okay? It's not like you're going to glance up and go, I can't look away. You know what I mean? Like, now, I know all you eye doctors out there are saying, dude, you got to be careful. You got to, okay, and thus, you probably own the glasses. Um, but, but maybe you have the glasses, or maybe you went and bought the T-shirt. So I bought this T-shirt specifically for this sermon. I'm going to be real with you all for a second. When I stood, stared into that light, like, now I can't see you all, um, so maybe God's preparing me for tomorrow. I don't know. Anyway, but, but this shirt, like, like some of you have went out and even bought the shirts. Um, I, I bought this one to preach in. I thought about getting the one that said totally mooned. <laughs> but I wasn't for sure how you'd respond as a church after the laughter. I, I think I would have been okay. I probably could have bought that one as well. Um, but seriously, there's just so much marketing going on uh, with this eclipse and, and all that. Like, and some of the marketing I like, like this marketing, I'm okay with. You know, like, you know, the, I don't know if you've seen it. You don't know what I'm, you can't tell it. To, this weekend, Krispy Kreme has taken their original glazed and turned them in. They're glazing them with chocolate. Okay. So like, to me, like, I'm like, yes. Now I made a big announcement during the nine o'clock saying, if you're watching online, you still have time to bring me some. I'm still waiting, okay? <clears throat> but, like, I like that. Like, I, I'm, I'm going to, uh, if you had, didn't know, yesterday, today, and tomorrow, go to Krispy Kreme, ask them for the Eclipse Donut, and that's what you'll get. And uh, so sometime uh, before the end of the day tomorrow, I am going to be hitting up Krispy Kreme for that. So that side of marketing I do enjoy. The other thing that I've seen is just the map. How many of you have seen an, a map of the Eclipse path? at some point on the computer, all right? Yeah, <clears throat> excuse me, most of us have, all right? And if you've, went, if you've Googled Eclipse map, you'll see that there are a ton of them. Like some of them look like this, all right? You know, just kind of showing the, the path as it starts in Oregon and goes across all the way through uh, South Carolina. Uh, I guess they put a star on this one for all the Gamecock fans, all right? Um, but you've got the path of, uh, of the, of the uh, solar eclipse, which is cool. But when I started looking into that, then all of a sudden I started finding other maps about the path of the eclipse. Like, for instance, one of them is this one. If you want to go to a Waffle House to watch the eclipse, this is a map of all the Waffle Houses along the eclipse path. So if you want day and night at Waffle House, right there you go. All right, I got to back up. Um, so, so it's right here. And, and I have to say this because I know during this hour, um, our campus pastor from Vegas, he is hosting. So Candace, which is his wife, I assume you're watching. And I know, so right now you're excited um, because you can see all the Waffle Houses. What I need to tell you about when Jake and Candace vid visited a couple weeks ago, we got here, I was talking to Candace. I said, Candace, what do you want to do while you're 
you're here in Conway, Myrtle Beach area. She said, I want to go to Waffle House. I was like, for real? And if you look on the map, they don't have a lot of them out west. I said, that's what you want to do? She goes, yes. Are there any Waffle Houses around? And I'm like, on every street corner. You know what I'm saying? So this is the path of the Waffle Houses. Here's another map. This is the path of all the Starbucks along the, the, the solar eclipse path. So, you know, if you want to fly out to Oregon real quick tonight, you can start drinking Starbucks there and all along America, all the way through South Carolina, you can f- get your Starbucks fix. All right. There's another map though that, that I asked Clay. I said, Clay, I found these all of a sudden. My guess is there's others out there. Will you do me a favor and just kind of search and see what you come up with? And he sent me this one, which I wasn't ready for. This is a map showing all the places the lizard man has shown up in, in South Carolina. <laughs> like, like, for real, like, I'm texting him, I'm like, Clay, is this for real? He goes, I, I guess, it's on the internet, it must be for real, I don't know. But then I talked about it Thursday night, and like, one of the football coaches came up, and he goes, oh yeah, it's for real. And who remembers the lizard man sightings, all right? So yeah, a lot of you who are locals, you remember when this is a big deal. It's saying the possible lizard man sightings from 1980 through 2001, all right? And a lot of them were around the Sumter Lake City area, which is in the path of the eclipse. So there's a warning going out right now to keep your eye out for the lizard man tomorrow. I don't know, but it is a map and a path of the eclipse, all right? And so this, like, it just got me thinking a lot, you know what I mean? And, and I started thinking about kind of this eclipse path, and um, I, I wanted to talk about it as we begin our series, all right? Because the, the pathway of the eclipse, um, just thinking about that from a map perspective, um, is really something that, that fits into where we're going with this new Rooted series. And, uh, you know, if you've been coming to The Rock for a while, you know we've been talking about this series for about the last five weeks. We've been saying, it's coming, it's on its way, get a book, get into a small group, make sure you're a part of it. Um, because it's, it's going to be a, a really critical series for our church. And uh, we've had a ton of people get on board. I, I don't know exactly how many books we've sold at this point. I know we're sold out again. We've sold 500 or 600, a, a ton of them. And we've got 100 or so on order that should be here tomorrow or the next day um, that you can pick up at C3. But So I know a bunch of people have bought the devotionals. I know that we've got over 50 small groups that are walking through it together. So there's going to be a bunch of people doing this. And we'll be doing it during our weekend services as well. And uh, the critical thing I want you to catch about this rooted series is how it's going to play in um, to your spiritual walk, all right? Now, I need to say this because I want to make sure nobody's confused, all right? I've had a lot of people asking, when do I start reading the book, okay? This week. And this week, just read week one. Now, week one is about three pages, all right? So it's not like a daily reading this week. It's just a couple pages just to make sure you read. The next week, we will start, and each day we'll read, like next Monday, you would read week two, day one, then Tuesday, week two, day two, all right, and so forth. So this week, just read week one. And as we go through this series, as we go through this book, we're going to kind of get a glimpse of what a good spiritual path looks like. And a good spiritual path is one that is rooted. But honestly, that's probably not like the spiritual path that many of us are on. Like if I was to say, can you map out your spiritual walk? Um, I think a lot of us would, would say that our spiritual walk looks like one of these three things that I want to show you. Like for some, you would say that your spiritual walk or your spiritual path looks something like this. A bunch of mountaintops and a bunch of valleys. And you would say that as I've been walking with God, whether you're young, like a, a teenager, whether you're older, you can say, yeah, man, I, I just remember times that, man, I was climbing that mountain, man, I, I remember the day that, that I accepted Christ, and man, it was awesome, and then all of a sudden, I got back into the world, and man, I just fell, and then one day, I came to my senses, I started doing this, I was going, I went to camp, that's what it was, and when I got to camp, I was on top of the mountain, but then I had to go back to school, and I started falling, and, and then all of a sudden, right here, a crisis hit my life. 
I think maybe I hit rock bottom. I done made a decision that was a horrible decision, and I was in the midst of crisis. Or maybe it was one of those things, uh, maybe you're an adult, and you got a call from the doctor, and, and uh, it wasn't good news, and all of a sudden, crisis hit, which a lot of people think when crisis hit, it takes me even further down in the valley. But you'll talk to a ton of people that when crisis hit, they start clinging to God more, so now they start climbing that mountaintop again. But then all of a sudden, we get to that peak of that mountain, and we forget how much we actually need God, and the next thing you know, we're starting to fall back down towards the valley. Does this make sense? Anybody been there? Anybody say, yep, I've been on that kind of spiritual walk? And many of us have, all right? And this might illustrate kind of your path of discipleship, all right? There's another one, though, that I'll show you that, that I know this is, this is a path that many of us have fall, uh, fall uh, followed at different times. Uh, It's a path that kind of looks like this, that all of a sudden, like you start walking with Jesus, like you take like two steps forward. And the next thing you know, you take three steps back, right? And then all of a sudden you take two steps forward towards Christ again. And then next thing you know, I take four steps back. And then I start journeying with Christ. I'm doing pretty well for a while. Something happens and I take two more steps back. And then I take a step towards Christ and I take like 14 steps back. And then I end up doing this. Does that make sense? It's like that point where like, man, I'm going to walk with Jesus. And then all of a sudden, next thing you know, I'm backsliding with Christ. Oh, no, I'm going to walk with Jesus. Next thing you know, I'm going back into some old habits. And and this kind of path, the, the easiest way for me to explain this kind of path, if you've rededicated your life like 15 times, that's that kind of path. Where you're going, man, I need to rededicate. I need to get back on track. And what happens is I'm moving forward with Jesus. I'm moving backwards with Jesus. There's another path that, that is out there. And uh, I, I really think this path um, looks a little, bit more, um, a little bit more like this. It's, it's just a flat line. Maybe, maybe there's a little, a little blip on the radar like that at some point. You know what I mean? And it's like, yep, that's my spiritual path. And, and this spiritual path typically happens in two different uh, groups. For some, it's, it's, man, I have no relationship with Jesus. Like, like you've been talking for a couple of minutes about this spiritual path and walking with Jesus and not, and you're like, I, I, I've never had that. Like, I was invited to church. I showed up. I'm here. Somebody told me to watch online, so I'm watching online. But a relationship with Jesus, a, a walk with God, uh, a, a path of discipleship, yeah, I'm, I'm not even there. And you would say that it's never even started. It's like a flat line that it's dead, that there is no walk there. Or there's another group of people that what happens is like you're going along in life, and then all of a sudden... Like you just have this little moment with God, this little moment where, where I, I get connected with God, this little moment where my, my heart or my mind is clinging to the spiritual, but it happens like a blip on the radar. And then next thing you know, it just seems like it's mundane. Like maybe, maybe it's even like I gave Jesus my life and I still come to church every week, but I just feel like my life with God, my spiritual walk is just dead. Like, it's just flatlined. And no matter what I do, you know, it just doesn't seem like anything changes. So I just keep coming, and I just keep kind of punching the time card. I show up at church, but this is just where I'm at. And I want everyone to know there's a better way. There's a better way. There's a better way than this mountaintop and valley experience. There's a better way than this back and forth experience. And there's a better way than this flatline experience. That there is a better path, a better map of your faith with Jesus than these three. And it looks a little bit like this. It looks a little bit like this, like this rooted logo we're going with. That if we could take this concept and start establishing some roots, start putting some roots down into the ground, and start really just trying to walk with Jesus, and if we were to get some strong roots, and if we were to allow our life with God to to kind of dig in, then what happens is we spring forth. Then what happens is we start growing towards God. And if we'll get deep roots into the ground, what that allows is for us to kind of form that trunk of the tree and become 
become strong. And now your path to God can look more like, man, I'm just going to keep climbing. I'm just going to keep going towards God. Does that mean that we'll never make mistakes? No, we'll make mistakes. But when the mistakes happen, you'll stay strong spiritually. Does it mean storms in life won't come? No, storms in life will come. But when the storms of life come, you'll be strong and you'll be able to stand against the wind that is trying to blow you over. Easy illustration of this is I have a confession to make. I love palm trees. <laughs> Just admitting it right now that, that I love a good palm tree. All right. Anybody with me? Okay. Anybody who's a local with me, like you lived here all your life. Thank you. I get a couple of them. I've got some guys on staff who make fun of me because I like palm trees. And they're like, we're local. We don't do palm trees. And I'm like, well, sorry, I do. And I love them, all right? So, so much so, though, they make fun of me for it. And, and uh, one of the guys here at church, he ended up buying me a palm tree for Christmas one year, all right? And it's just a little bitty palm tree. I came home from our Christmas Eve service, and it was sitting in my front yard. And I was like, yes! And it was a joke, but to me, it was awesome. You know what I mean? So a couple of days later, I went out and, you know, I moved it around the yard. So I found that perfect place that I wanted the palm tree. And I was like, yeah, right there. So I dug the hole. I put the palm tree in the ground. And I was like, all right, pack a little dirt around it and went on my way. Come home from work next couple of days. Where's that palm tree? Laying on its side. I'm like, come on. It's not very tall. It shouldn't blow over. So I put it back. I pack it in. I go do about my life. Next couple days, come home, blown over again. Like that thing just kept blowing over, kept blowing over. Finally, I started looking around. I started seeing that these young palm trees all had like stakes to them, you know, propping them up. And you all like, yeah, duh. Okay. I'm I'm not a guy that plants a lot of trees, all right? So I ended up staking it up, and, and it stood strong. And to the point now that I've been able to take those away, that, that it's doing all right, kind of from a strength in the ground issue, but it's still got baby roots. My problem with my palm tree right now is it's brown. You know what I'm saying? Like, like it doesn't look like, like a, a palm tree that's thriving. It's surviving, but it isn't thriving. And the reason why is, honestly, I just don't do a very good job of caring for it. Like, it's so bad that I came home about a month ago, and there was like a little flyer shoved in my door, and I opened it up as from a landscape guy. It said, specializing in palm trees. <laughs> I was like, come on, dude. You know what I mean? Here's the reality. For some of us, our spiritual map is all over the place. For some of us, that, you know, it's flat line. For some of us, it's back and forth. For some of us, we're starting to put some roots in the ground. But you would say, even if, if I've started to put some roots in the ground, it doesn't feel like my, my spiritual life is thriving. Maybe surviving, but not thriving. And guys, what I want for you, what I want for me, is I want to walk with God that thrives. I want to walk with God that is on fire. I want to walk with God that's not mundane, that's not getting by, that isn't just good enough to survive so maybe one day I get to heaven. But I want to walk with God that thrives. And that's what Jesus wants for each and every one of us as well. That's the reason he said in John 10:10, 10, 10, I have come to give you life and life to the full, life extravagant, life of riches, not m like financial riches, but a rich, satisfying life. Well, how do we get that? Get rooted. And maybe another way for me to say it is not just get rooted, but learn your ABCs. Learn your ABCs. If you want a spiritual walk with God that is rooted and that is thriving, learn your ABCs. And it starts with this word, accept. Everybody do me a favor and say accept. accept. All right, good. That was the Matt Brown moment for the day. Um, <laughs> if you know Matt, he likes to have y'all talk back like that. Anyway, um, but I want you to learn that word accept. I want you to think about that word accept, all right? And uh, inside of a spiritual walk with God, it really just means to accept Christ. And let me, let me read a scripture to you. I'm going to read from the book of Acts. 
Now, we've read from, from this text a, a couple times over the last month for some different reasons. We talked a couple weeks ago about responding to Christ. And when we talked about responding to Christ, we used this text, or the, at least this book called the book of Acts. It's a book that was written by a guy named Luke, um, who was a guy who just wanted to write a, a historical record. He just wanted to, to write about who Jesus was and what his disciples did, all right? So that's where we're going to pick it up. It says this in, in uh, the book of Acts, the second chapter, verse 40. It says, Peter continued preaching for a long time, strongly urging all of his listeners, save yourself from this crooked generation. Now, let me stop there and just make sure you, you catch what's going on. So it's the first day the church had ever existed. Peter's gone out with the other apostles, the other leaders. They're preaching to thousands of people. And Peter has just said, you guys are responsible for crucifying Christ. You're responsible for putting the Son of God. You're responsible for putting the Lord to death. And when he had said that, they were cut to their heart. They said, what do we need to do to be saved? And he said, well, repent and be baptized, and every one of you will get the gift of the Holy Spirit. And then that's where he picks this up, and he says, and then he continued to plead with them and to preach to them about who Jesus Christ was. Save yourself from this crooked generation. What he's saying is, save yourself from this thought pattern that Jesus is just some other dude, that Jesus was just some prophet. Save yourself from that errant thinking and start thinking about who Jesus truly is. And then it says this, those who believed what Peter said were baptized and added to the church that day, about 3,000 in all. So out of the thousands of people who heard that message, 3,000 of them stood up and said, I want to accept Jesus Christ as my Savior, as my Lord. And that's what another verse kind of says something very similar to that. This is written out of Colossians, the second chapter, another book in the Bible. It says this, and now, just as you accepted Christ Jesus as your Lord, you must continue to follow him. Let your roots grow down into him and let your lives be built on him. Then your faith will grow strong. And it's, it's really important that in this verse that we pick out a couple key words, all right? One, that you've accepted, all right? Which means that you've acknowledged that you have made a mental decision, a, a heart decision that you're saying, yes, I want to accept, I want to acknowledge, I want to respond that Christ Jesus as your Lord. Now, this is a huge thing. What Paul said here is he didn't say, accept Christ Jesus as a historical man. He doesn't say, now that you've accepted Christ Jesus as your friend. He doesn't say, now that you've accepted Christ Jesus as your Savior. Even that idea of Savior, Savior is a big deal, all right? When we accept Christ Jesus as our Savior, we're saying, Jesus, I recognize that I have sinned, that I've fallen short of your glory, and that I need you for eternal life. And that's critical, and we talk about that all the time here at church. We preach about the grace of God and that no one is too far away from the grace of God, that his grace is for everyone. But I want to make sure we catch something right now, especially when it's this concept of being rooted, that if you want to be rooted, then we have to make sure we're doing more than accepting Jesus Christ just as our Savior, because you really can't accept him as your savior and not your Lord. Like you can mentally think that you can. And unfortunately, many of us have. Unfortunately, many of us go, man, Jesus, I want you as my savior. I want you to forgive my sins. I just don't want to follow you in life. And guys, when we do that, we've missed who Jesus really is. No, who Jesus really is, is he's Lord. Well, what's that mean? It means that he's master. Uh, the, another way to say it, more of a modern phrase we'd say is he's leader. That, that I need to accept Jesus Christ as my master, as my Lord, as my leader. And if Jesus Christ is my leader, then that means I'm willing to follow. If Jesus Christ is my Lord, if he's my leader, then I'm willing to follow him. And if I follow him, then my roots can grow down deep into him and I can be strong. 
So if you want this pathway of discipleship, if you want to have roots, then one aspect of having roots, roots is to make sure that you've accepted Christ. But, but there's, there's another thing that, that I got to move on to. The other one is this idea of belong, that you've got to belong. Too many times we try to do life alone. Too many times we think, you know what, I just need to worry about my life. I need to worry about my, my career. I need to worry about uh, my situation. I need to worry about my spiritual path. I need to, to worry about me. You do you and I'll do me. But guys, let me just say this, that if you try to do life alone, then you're going to be weak and you're going to be a tree that falls over. That you've got to understand, that's the reason we preach all the time, that you need to team up with other people, that you can't do life solo, that you've got to have some other people in your life who are investing into you and you investing into them. I want you to think about the giant sequoia trees for a second. All right. If you haven't heard of a sequoia tree, it's one of the biggest trees in the world. Uh, in America, we'll see them over um, in uh, upstate California, Oregon, that area. Now, a sequoia tree um, will get to about 200 to 300 foot tall. All right. That's massive. I mean, think about the length of a football field. That's how tall that tree goes up. One of the interesting things about a sequoia tree, though, is it only goes about 20 to 30 feet down into the ground. So 200 to 300 feet vertically into the air, but only 20 or 30 feet down into the ground. Now, if a root system of a sequoia tree only did that, it would never survive. The minute a windstorm came along, it would blow over and die. It would tumble to the ground. But another aspect of the root system of the sequoia tree is it only goes 20 to 30 feet down into the ground, but it goes way out in width. And not only does it just go way out, but as it goes out, it connects to all of the other sequoia trees around it. So their, their, um, their root system will intertwine. Their root system will, will get tangled up together. And by intertwining, by, by coming together, they are made strong. And again, that's the reason you won't see a sequoia tree by itself. By itself, it'll fall down. But surrounded by a bunch of sequoia trees, their root system holds them steadily in the earth. And that's the exact same way it is for you as a believer in Christ. That's the exact same way it is for you who's maybe investigating who Jesus Christ is. That you've got to have other people around you who can help hold you, who can help be there for you, who can keep you strong. I want you to think about that early church. Remember, it said that 3,000 came to know who Christ was in one day. But it wasn't like 3,000 came to Jesus and then went off by themselves. No, 3,000 came to Christ, and then they started doing life together. Let me go back to that scripture and read it. It says this in Acts chapter 2. This is just following that verse. It's verse 42. It says, and they, meaning those new disciples devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching and to fellowship, to the breaking of bread and to prayers. And all who believed were together and had all things in common, and they were selling their possessions and belongings and distributing the proceeds to all as they had needs. These, this group of new Christians, they were getting together. They were taking care of one another. They were doing life together. They were learning from God's word together. They were praying together. They were taking communion and sharing meals together. And then they were taking care of one another. When one of them had a need, another one stepped forth and said, hey, I'll take care of that. When somebody was struggling, a group came alongside of them. And the reality is, guys, let's just face it. Life can be difficult. It can be difficult. Spiritually walking with God, trying to stay on track without letting our own emotions and our own heart and our own sin get in the way can be difficult. And that's why we have to put other people around us. And, you know, there's tons of different ways to do that. You can do it by getting, you know, some neighborhood friends together. You can do it by working out with some people. You can do it in, in tons of different ways. But I want to say when it comes to your spiritual walk, the most important people for you to hang around with is some people who want to talk about God with you and want to help hold you strong. You got to belong and that's the reason we're, again, pushing this idea of teaming up, but especially through this series. But it goes another step further. It's just not about belonging. It's also about being committed. A, accept. B, belong. C, be committed. 
Let me read this next part of this verse. It says this. All the while, all right, this is just the very next verse. All the while praising God and enjoying the goodwill of all the people. And each day the Lord added to their fellowship those who were being saved. So 3,000 come together, they accept, and then those 3,000, they all come together as a, as a team, all right? And they're dividing up, and they're meeting in houses every day, which means not all 3,000 meeting together. No, they're meeting in small groups in all of these houses. And while that was going on, it, it says this. It says, all the while they were praising God. All the while, the goodwill of all the people was all around them. And the Lord added added to them every day. And what I want you to see here is these people were committed to the mission of God. They were saying, God, we want to praise you. We want to love you. They were saying, God, we want to serve you. And as they were serving, they're going out. And as they're loving each other, they're having an opportunity to love others. People around them who were not even part of their fellowship said, man, there's something different about that group. Uh, There's something that they've got that I don't have. And because of that, they said, we want to join. I want you to think about that in our context. Praising God, that's loving God. The goodwill of all the people, that's loving people. That's loving one another and then allowing those around us to see that and then being willing to do something about it, which means I've got to be committed to the mission of God. You want deep roots? Accept Christ as Lord. Belong to the body of believers. Team up and then be committed to the mission of God, which is loving God, loving people, and doing something about it. And when you add those things into your spiritual walk, what you'll find is that you'll, you'll start to get rooted a little bit. You'll start to, to look like this. It'll be one of those things that, that you'll start adding some of these things to your life. That you'll start developing the, this root system. And as you develop this root system, it's going to cause you to grow and to be strong. Now, here's something I got to make sure I say real quick, though. I talked about A, B, C. What I don't want you to think, though, is that this is some linear type uh, progression that first I've got to accept Christ, and then I can belong to the church, and then I can be committed to the vision. All right? That's not it at all. These do not have to come in any certain order. For some of you, you might belong way before you ever accept. You might be going to a small group, and you might have told the people in your small group, hey, I really don't have faith in in, in God right now. I'm investigating it. I like to hear about it. Um, But what I love is just the group of people that I've I've been able to be around and the mission that, that we're on of helping other people. So you might belong way before you ever accept. You might say, I want to be about helping people. I want to be about this idea of making this world a better place. And you might be committed to parts of our vision, but not have accepted Christ yet. That's all right. What's not all right, though, is for us to think, one, that we've got to go in this direction, because if so, you're like, well, I missed a step. What do I do? It's not that at all. Grab one of them, and then from that, add another one, and then from that, add another one, because it's not about going A, B, C. It's about having the whole collection together. And when you start adding these things into your life, then your roots will go down. But there's one other beautiful part about it. When you put all three of these things in your life, you don't only just have great roots and a strong trunk, but then you start bearing fruit. And what's the fruit? Disciples. So see, really, it's A, B, C, D. Because more than anything in my life, I want to bear disciples. I want to produce fruit, and the fruit that God calls each and every one of us to, to, to produce is more disciples. So when I have this concept of who Jesus is as my Lord, when I belong to a team, when I'm committed to the vision, then I'm not only having roots and a strong trunk, but now I'm also producing other disciples. And that's what it means to be rooted. So that's my challenge today. Will you get rooted? You know, we're going to move into a time of response right now. And I'm just going to encourage us while we do this, just to, just to think where you're at. 
just to kind of think, you know, where, where am I at in this process? And what is it I need to add today? Man, you're not going to leave here right now going, I'm going to throw all three of them in real quick. No, chances are you're going to be like, well, I got one. How about I add one more? Man, I got two of these. How about I add a third? I get all three, man. I need to really look about how I can go and produce more disciples who have found what I have found. So we're going to sing a couple songs right now. If you want to take communion, it's available up here. If you want to spend some time praying in the prayer corner over by the baptistry, you're welcome to do that. If you want to talk to somebody about getting baptized today, man, come talk to us. But as we worship, as we sing this song we sang earlier about being extravagant, then I want to give this challenge. Add one of these letters to your life. If you've never accepted Christ as your Lord, but you're ready, man, maybe today's the day. Maybe today's the day where you say, you know what? I do believe that he was a historical figure, that he really walked this earth. And I know that I need my sins forgiven. And I'm ready not just to ask him to save me, but I'm ready to follow. And man, if that's you today, just, just say a simple prayer to God. Saying, God, I, I'm sorry and I repent. I need you and I want to follow you. Man, I invite you to say that prayer. And if you do, then I also encourage you to come to the Connect Corner. Because we'd love to talk to you about that. We'd love to help you say that prayer if you don't even know how to do that. But maybe today what you're saying is, yeah, he's my Lord, and yeah, I'm committed to his mission, but I'm not on a team. I don't belong to a team, and today's the day that maybe I make that decision. Whatever it is, let's wrestle with it, and let's respond to the things that we feel like that we've discovered today about what it means to be rooted and to have that path of discipleship. Why don't you stand up with me? I'm going to pray, and then we're going to move into this time of response. Jesus, thank you that we can gather around right now. We can hear from your word. And Jesus, I pray this morning that we would put it into practice. And God, whatever we need to do to develop those roots, to put these different aspects in our life of discipleship, God, help us to respond and to do it. Jesus, we love you. We thank you for your amazing grace in your name. Let's spend some time responding.